My name is John Clendenin, Chief Executive Officer of IC Logistics. Inner Circle Logistics is an early stage supply chain software and services company focused on the opportunities involving small and medium sized enterprises in the e-market space. The company combines web enabled data management processes and technologies with the integration and information management capabilities of enterprise resources planning to realize true supply chain power for its customers. The company's mission is to be a global leader in creating shareholder value by developing and helping its customers implement internet-based B2B integrated supply chain solutions that lead to reduced investments, lower costs, greater productivity, and higher revenues. From technological breakthroughs to innovative business strategies, from manufacturing to e-commerce, from telecommunications to the home computer, on World Business Review with Alexander Hay. Welcome to World Business Review. I'm Alexander Haig. Last mile supply chain integration is our next topic for review. Here for this discussion is John A. Clendenning, CEO of Inner Circle Logistics. Welcome, John. We're delighted to have you on the show. Thank you, General. It's good to be here. Good. Now, our industry expert is our old friend Dan Meklovic, Vice President and Research Director at Gartner G2. Uh, Dan, you're always welcome, as you know. Thanks, so. Al. Now, Dan, what is the last mile of the supply chain? Well, it's just as it says, it's the last mile. That is, getting the product into the customer's hand at the very end of it. It's, it's getting it out of the truck and onto the customer's dock. It's getting it out of the truck and into the customer's yard or on their front porch. Good. Now, John, supply chain management is a heavily used term. What does it mean to you in a, in a practical sense? Uh, practically and, and, and really looking at from a small and medium sized manufacturer, in, t in today's environment people are no longer looking just within their walls of what happens in their shop and increasingly companies are integrating parts and services, whole assemblies into an assembly operation. So it becomes more important to understand the different tiers of suppliers and what are the component parts along the whole integrated supply chain of supplying parts and materials going through the final production of a product. Very good. Now for more on this very important subject, let us go to this World Business Review field report. The internet can be an exceptional enabler of commercial enterprise. It is the conduit by which many of today's more complex business strategies are being executed. Nowhere is this more evident than in supply chain management. Having a virtual organization has its own set of benefits. IC Logistics has successfully deployed a virtual environment for its employees. This has worked out very well for us because we have employees that are scattered not only around the country but around the world. Uh, it creates a couple of advantages for the employees that we have. Uh, as opposed to saying, welcome to our company, you must move to St. Louis, we can say, welcome to our company, where would you like to live? What makes sense for you? And this, is, frankly, is a, a great attraction for those people. In addition to which, because we are spread around the country, when we do get together, uh, we really do cherish that time that we spend together, and the camaraderie is outstanding, and uh, it's a wonderful environment. In this endeavor, IC Logistics has teamed up with Talison Technologies. I began my relationship with John Clendenin while he was on the senior faculty at, at Harvard. Uh, I actually would travel regularly to, to Harvard while uh, they were teaching a case that they had done um, on Aerotech Service Group, uh, our company name at the time. And uh, that case was looking at how we leveraged uh, for Boeing uh, access to their supply chain and, and actually uh, their small, medium-sized suppliers uh, literally getting uh, electronic real-time access into drawings and process specs, uh, specifications that were available on their, the internet at the time. Small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as their prime contractors, need the benefits of today's technology to handle the challenges posed by information and supply chain needs. Companies such as IC Logistics feel that outsourcing to a specialist can be their answer. For World Business Review, I'm Steve Bennett. Now, Dan, how important are small to medium-sized companies uh, to our economy today? 
Well, Al, they're critical. They are the backbone of the economy. Um, whether you're talking about making some of the airplane parts, you know, the chairs and things, all the way to automobile parts, th these big things we buy, the airplanes, you know, the big Boeings or the big GM cars, couldn't be made if it weren't for those tier two and tier three suppliers that are making all the pieces and parts that go into them. So it, it's very critical. John, can you talk to me a little bit about how IC Logistics is going to work with these small to medium enterprises to survive, if you will, the uh, supply chain issues that are being pushed down upon them by these big tier one uh, manufacturers? Well, Dan, in increasingly the uh, the large manufacturers have invested heavily in ERP or in enterprise resources planning systems, supply chain management systems. These are large systems that they've spent millions of dollars on and are used to integrate their their data and their supply chain requirements. Most of the time, these systems are focused internally and they need to get data from their suppliers. And they have gone through a consolidation, if you will, of the larger suppliers so that they have the ability to interact with their complex and increasingly more complex uh, technical environment. The internet is becoming a vital part of that. The small companies have this requirement to do EDI and electronic data interchange and there's been various failed attempts at being able to integrate those. They become the least capable people in the supply chain as far as they have the least amount of resources. They spend an average of maybe $10,000 a year on IT and so trying to integrate them has become a, a large problem. What we have done is come up with a low-cost solution that enables their critical data that today they send via fax or they do telephone calls to get that data uh, needed. And we solve the data integrity problem because it's up to date and we actually port that data from their small PC to the web. And in a web-based environment, now it's accessible by all the large companies. Now, John, how does the internet give advantage uh, for collaborative supply chain management? Well, Al, with the, with the collaboration, it requires this interchange of real-time information. What the Internet does, it's ubiquitous, it's available 24 hours a day, it overcomes a lot of the disadvantages. So a small company can have a global Internet presence and, and make its data available to larger companies and others of its suppliers in a, in a, in a fairly robust exchange way. It allows the interaction of systems to happen when we look at this relational database environment which supports the ERP and the management systems. That data becomes critical. The small companies, although they are pro it's prohibitive to try to break this last mile when they look at the the, the type of connection they have. So the broadband connections aren't always available and so they have their connection to the internet, the telecommunications is a barrier. What we do is remove that barrier by getting the critical supply chain information that's necessary and we put that on the web. Once it's on the web in a secure way using some of the new technologies like HTTPS, uh, the JavaScript, the XML, allows the interchange of the data directly to the large company's ERP system and it can happen in milliseconds. The transaction processing module that's available in the ERP system can now look at tiers of suppliers of information and actually roll it up. So let's say if you had uh, Ford Motor Company would be able to see in a production if they wanted to go up 15% in production, they would be able to see what the status of the inventory of the parts are for their chassis manufacturers and then their wheels, then their brakes, and then the supplier of the brakes could look and see where the calipers are. And so instead of telling everyone to go up 15%, there could be various suppliers on the chain that were in excess inventory positions. Mm -hmm. Helps with things like uh, cutting in a new part. You would know if you want to um, uh, obsolete a part that the suppliers may have three months of supply and if you cut it in on one date you have to eat all of those expenses whereas if you had that real-time data you can now say well I know precisely when to do that to optimize the performance of the entire supply chain. Yeah. Well John what is the most significant specific challenge when you're trying to integrate that last mile? Dan I think the, the the most significant challenge I think is one of data integrity. So, so right now they uh, the companies use a combination approach of actually calling on the telephone or they have portals or trading market spaces. Uh, Cobacent, uh, Exostar, some of the different industry standards that people have been going towards. The challenge is that 
each individual supplier can solve the problem for one vendor. So if you're the person that makes brake pads, when you need to connect up to Ford, Ford's system allows you to enter into a portal and give them that information. But then when you want to sell the same brake parts to Volvo or to Chrysler or to GM, you have to keep doing it in a different way each time. So the challenge is the person least able to understand the complexities and the technology and has the least amount of training is the one forced mm -hmm. to use myriad different techniques to integrate into the supply chain. Or they've reduced it and solved the problem from a commodity basis. So they'll have a trading market space and for non-production parts or what we call MRO materials and, and repair and operations materials, so pallets and screws and that kind of commodity item, they use it to actually beat up on the suppliers to get cost advantages. And what's really needed is for production parts to be integrated into the supply chain. So that critical data is available at the SME or the small and medium sized enterprise. What we do is uh, for our software is we take that data that they would today fax or call on the telephone and we put it into a little table and we port that data to the internet. Now that it's at the internet with the proper access and authentication, a large company or one of their suppliers can have 24 hour a day access to the information. Very good. Now, John, why is web-based data management a viable solution for this challenge? I think, uh, General, the, the web-based data management is saying that the, the relational database environment, there's, there's really, when I look at systems, there's um, three kinds of systems. There are database systems, there are uh, EDI systems, which are used for exchange of information, and there is decision support systems the systems that use algorithms and help with the planning and enterprises. So the decision support systems are in place and there's several large ERP players. And so you have the Oracles and SAPs and I2s and Band Manugistics, several uh, companies that provide that decision support. The data that they have, they either have to get from their legacy systems environments or they go and they get a primary source of the data. So the data management that they have internally in a relational database, what we use in web-based data management is say, take a portion of that data that they would go internally to get. We take the data from the company, the small company's PC, and then we convert it to a small relational database environment. So think of Microsoft Access or um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Once we have those key supply chain data elements in that little table, we port that information to the World Wide Web on the mm -hmm. supplier's server. Well, at the server, what we then have is a web-based data environment where the server has the data that can talk to the other relational database elements at the prime uh, customer. So now the web allows the 24-hour access and also one of the critical things, even if you could bridge the last mile using a 288 modem, the speed becomes a barrier. When it's a web-based server environment, that happens in milliseconds at what we call T2 or T3 speed. So now the ERP system can make decision support um, available using data that comes from the prime service. And you can have thousands of suppliers all putting data on their websites and with the URL, which is the address uh, ability to find these servers, we become one uh, integrated environment, which I call a virtual relational database. Now at this juncture, uh, John, what we normally do is ask our guests to give our viewers a, a prediction of what he sees coming down the road in the next year or two. What do you see in your industry in this near-term space? General, I, I see the, the future is really one where um, the, more and more control is going to happen on the desktop of the, mm -hmm. um, of the, of the business person. So the web-based tools and the interaction with the internet is going to become more and more what I would call a, a business infrastructure environment rather than just a tool of having a dumb terminal. And what I mean by that is that increasingly on the desktop you can have real-time visibility of research, you can get all the data you need. I see a world where uh, personal uh, devices such as the Palm Pilots that you can download in or information. The question becomes one of technology that says you have the hardware as far as what are the platforms. I think that that's a commodity kind of thing and, and you'll see the, the technology becoming compatible. Mm -hmm. 
Then there's the software, and the software environment says which software you're using. I think they'll all have roughly the same kinds of characteristics. Then you have the telecommunications aspect and our glut of bandwidth right now saying, you know, how do you actually translate the information? So that's the kind of environment. So then it becomes back to the business basics of saying, how do we use all this technology to come up with, how do we share fundamental business information? That infrastructure of the internet is going to allow those real-time decisions, regardless of where they're being made on the planet, that that customer-centric information that the customer needs to know can have visibility and it's accessible on the web. So whether it's supply chain data, whether it's business information, lead times, predictions, all of that information will be available in a secure environment on the web. Most of the, to date, the, the kinds of competitive responses I've seen has been in that decision support realm. Mm -hmm. People are trying to have the next best algorithm for planning. The data is the key. If you don't have that essential element of information that you need, the decision support system doesn't make any difference. Plus, the data integrity is important. When was the data updated? How do you know it's the veracity of the data? So what we're trying to do is have that little piece that says we can provide the data, not the decision support, not the telecommunications infrastructure. We can be the harbingers of the, of the data and provide that in a web-based environment. And I think that that's going to fit nicely with what the uh, future holds for all of us. Very good. Now, Dan, what do you see? Well, clearly, companies are focusing on their core competency, which means we're going to have more and more companies involved in the supply chain. We're not going to see these big monolithic companies. It's going to be smaller, more focused companies, more complex supply chains, smaller companies. Therefore, you're going to need the ability to share information or, uh, between these smaller but more prolific companies if we're going to get anything made. So this is an area that's going to continue to grow in importance. Very good. Now, unfortunately, the clock has caught us again, and we're going to have to terminate this very interesting discussion. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you, John, for your very, very fine and detailed contribution today. General, it's been my pleasure. Good. And as always, Dan, you're presence is indispensable. Thanks, Al. And thank you for watching. Until next time for World Business Review, I'm Alexander Haig.